Hi everyone, welcome to our worship service at St. Mark United Methodist Church at our River Street campus here in Greenwood. Today we're celebrating the greatest story ever told and we're looking at the beginning of the story, a story that is for real people facing real challenges in a real world today. We're glad you're joining with us. As in ancient times, a brilliant star guided kings from the east. The king of kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the blend. Would you please stand and join us as we lift our hearts, as we lift our voices to praise God.
Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark and to Sunday Morning Blend. First of all, we want to welcome all of you for joining us, and we want to welcome Kenny back to the stage today and Russell, and Russell back to the drums today. Yeah. And we also want to thank CJ for having led us for the last two weeks and done a great job. So a um, couple of quick things. This is the second Sunday of Advent, and we want to remind you that we do have cookie recipe books and Advent devotionals at the door when you leave. So if you have not picked one up, please do that so that you can have one to cook and pray the rest of the Advent season, right? All those things you're supposed to be doing anyway. Okay, so it is always a good and a joyful thing to be able to share what we believe. So will you please join me this morning in our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, as we go to our time of prayer, we are going to give you an opportunity to lift up prayers and praises of your own. But the scripture that I want to share with you first is a popular scripture but you may not recognize exactly as I will read it this morning. It comes from Isaiah. It is chapter 9, verse 6. So if you have your Bible, your, my, your Bible may say something different, but this is from The Voice, and I love the way that this reads. So let me begin. Hope of all hopes, dream of our dreams. A child is born sweet breath. A son is given to us, a living gift. And even now, with tiny features and dewy hair, he is great. The power of leadership and the weight of authority will rest on his shoulders. His name? His name we will know in many ways. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, 
mighty God. Dear Father, everlasting, ever present, never failing, Master of wholeness, Prince of peace. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what an amazing list right here in Isaiah 9 6. Lord, that fills our soul. It gives us a new perspective. It gives us the sweet breath and dewy hair of a baby to focus on. But then you give us these mighty words Prince of Peace, holding that authority on his shoulders. And Lord, you said, everlasting, ever present, never failing, master of wholeness. Lord, we are grateful. And Lord, during this time of Advent, we pray that you will open our eyes wide open to see what you have called us to. We pray that we will be grateful every day, that we will serve in humility, and Lord, that you will open our hearts and mind to serve and follow you. Now, Lord, in a spirit of peace and in a spirit of hope and with you in mind, let us lift forward the prayers of our people. Lord, we love the way that you listen. We love the way that you surprise us daily with the way that you answer our prayers. And so, Lord, we wait expectantly for you to answer the prayers of these people this morning. And now we join together as a body of believers to pray the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in, it's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to let you be seated for just a moment, and I'm going to invite the Philcox family to come forward to light our Advent wreath. Thank you, ma'am. Life is a journey. Every journey faces the unknown. There is too much to do. Our lists are long. Our calendars are filled up. And this year, there are so many worries. Anxiety can sometimes overwhelm us. We claim hope for the journey because we follow the one who will travel with us and sustain us on the way. Matthew 1, through 23 says, Years and years ago, Isaiah, a prophet of Israel, foretold the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. A virgin will conceive and bear a son, and his name will be Emmanuel, which is a Hebrew name that means God with us. We place our hope in the one who is always with us. Today we light the candles of peace and hope to give us the strength for the journey. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Would you please stand and join us as we continue to praise God? Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply. Echoing their joyous dreams Come 
to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth the angels see. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. nice to be back with y'all. I've certainly missed you. And on behalf of me and my family, we appreciate all the prayers. We certainly felt them and uh, glad to be back on the men. So.
Thanks, band. Thanks, Madison. Thanks, everybody. Hey, kids, come on down, and uh, we're going to take a look at something that's beautiful. Andrew? Andrew's coming. No, no, no. Aubrey's coming. Okay, here comes some more. Yeah, because you see, the reason I want you to be up close is I want, to, I want you to see something up here on this table. Nothing better than a dad with a kid. So we're looking today at these figures. This is called a certain kind of set. What's the name of this set? It's a nativity set, right? How many, nativ how many of you have a nativity set in your home? Raise your hand. Lots of people have nativity sets. Some people have nativity pictures. The word nativity means it's the people that were at Jesus' birth. So when you think of nativity, think of Jesus' birthday. That's what it means. So there they are. Let's see. Baby Jesus is right in the middle because it's his birthday, right? And then his mother Mary, you see Mary is kneeled, knelt down beside him. And then his bonus dad named Joseph. You know why they call him a bonus dad? Because God, his father, is his real dad. Joseph was the one to just be there for him and to take care of the family. And then there's somebody holding a lamb over on the other side, and that was the shepherds. That's right, they came. And that's right, these others are called wise men. But they look a little different, don't they? They're, they're, we're told they're from the east. They're stargazers. You know what stargazers are? That's right. They look for constellations. Big word. Way to go, Andrew. That's right. And they saw something in the sky. And it was called the Bethlehem star. That's right. It pointed right smack dab down to Jesus. That's right. They followed the star long, long way. And when they got there, you know what they did? They worshiped Jesus by giving him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they were giving gifts to Jesus. That's why at Christmas time we give gifts. Because the wise man did. And like Santa, that's right. Yeah, wait a minute, I don't see Santa up here. I that's right, he wasn't in the first nativity. Old Saint Nick came later when there was a priest named Saint Nicholas who would go around and give presents to all the children because Jesus is God's present to us. And that's the wonderful thing about the nativity. So when you see a nativity, if you're driving around town and see one, Point it out and tell everybody in the family, there's the nativity. And you know what I think is the most special in the nativity? Is Jesus and is the star that points us and leads us to Jesus. So I hope you all can be stars and you can point others to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for the star that lights Jesus, the light of the world. I thank you for this church that tells everyone that Jesus loves us. 
This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, kids. Children's Church with Jennifer. I want to thank everybody who volunteered and took part in decorating this, this location. Isn't it just beautiful? The, it's, it's almost breathtaking when you come in. And it's that light. And it's the way that it brightens everything up. This is a wonderful time of year. And we are celebrating the greatest story ever told. Its beginning is the nativity. And the, some people call the ending is communion. But it really isn't. It's only the middle. Because the resurrection. Jesus is alive today. And so I want us to take a look at the story through Matthew's eyes. So many of us understand the story from uh, all of the parts. It was Luke who tells us about the shepherds. Matthew doesn't even tell us. But it is Matthew who in verse 18 of this first chapter says, so here finally is the story of the birth of Jesus, the anointed. It is quite a remarkable story. You know why he says finally? Because all the verses that come before that is the genealogy of Jesus. Many people jump right over it. Why There are so many different names, you can't even pronounce them. But Matthew is doing something remarkable. He tells us that Jesus is the son of King David, the greatest king of Israel. Jesus is greater. And that Jesus is the son of Abraham. And before Abraham, Jesus says, I am. In other words, Jesus, part of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit, was the creator of all things and then became like us, became one of us, a child. And it's quite a story. It's a remarkable story, Matthew says. And what's remarkable about it is he begins to tell us about the people in the line of Jesus. He doesn't leave them out. He tells us about the good, the bad, and the very ugly. Persons that did terrible things. Why would he include those people? He could have just left them out. Why, in fact, the Pharisees, whenever they would tell about their bloodline, it was only the good people. They left the others out. I've pastored churches in Abbeville, Greenwood, and uh, Lawrence County in this area. And I was introduced to a person whose last name, his family lives in Abbeville, Greenwood, and Lawrence County. And I said to him, so uh, are you related to all the, and I said the last name. And he said, yeah, preacher. I'm related to every single one of them, the good, the bad, and the very ugly, just like Jesus. And somebody had told him about Matthew chapter 1, where people like Tamar, read the story of Tamar in the Old Testament, and you'll shake your head. Why would, why would Matthew put that in the line of Jesus? Read the stories of how Solomon was born in an adulterous affair and how his daddy had killed his mama's husband. You see, there's, there's ugliness that Jesus says, I'm going to come into this dark world and I'm going to make it new. 
And that's what makes this the greatest story that's ever told. It's a real story for real people facing real challenges in our real world today. Now, when Joseph had decided, in verse 20, to act on his instincts, a messenger of the Lord came to him in a dream. Mary and Joseph were betrothed. That's the word that's used. They were engaged. But back in his day, a marriage was a contract between two men. The father of the bride and the groom. The father would, well, he'd work out a good deal. It was all money related. And it was who he picked for his daughter. It wasn't love at first sight. There was no dating. There was no, it wasn't the way that we do it in our world today. And then when And before they had relations, Mary is pregnant. Joseph's like, okay, I got to do something here because I've got to, I've got to break this contract and do it quietly because if people find out, they'll put her to death. And a messenger of the Lord comes to Joseph. And says, hey, Joseph, the line of Jesus is one that includes all people, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we want you to be the one who puts this together and stands up for this family and takes care of it. So you wake up. On a cold day, you don't go out back to the outhouse. You don't go outside to get your water. If you're like me and, hey, did the power go off? If the temperature starts to drop a little bit, we start to complain. But here in this scenario, they've got a difficult life. Traveling by donkey. They get into town, and there's no room for them. So their child is born in a feeding trough. And then the the rumors are all around them as to her being pregnant before the the wedding. And and then there's the, the having to flee from a murderous king. And so they they run to another country to seek refuge. The greatest story is a real story for real people facing real challenges in a real world. And even they did. Tough challenges. So the things that you're going through, and you get on your knees and you pray and you ask God, Oh God, and nobody snaps his fingers. You don't have a miracle. Maybe you are brought instead like this family and and sent in another direction. You see, what we see is Jesus is in the real world. And then we're told that the virgin conceives and bears a son and his name will be Emmanuel. His name means God with us. God really is is with us in a real world with real problems. Your problems don't go away, but you have someone with you. A God who calls you to trust him, and he walks with you, and he guides you, and he leads you, and he directs you, and he gives you strength to face the challenges. We're living in a worldwide pandemic. It's not just a pandemic that's moving in a hot spot somewhere out west. It seems to be accelerating in our area. But it's worldwide. 
and in Bethlehem, where the nativity was first seen. There's a church. I bet you can guess what the name of the church is. It's right where Jesus was born, and it's called the Church of the Nativity. The front door, it's about that high. And tourists who go to see it, everyone have to bow down to come in. It's designed that way. To come in like the wise men did and worship. 6,000 people a day come to the church of the nativity. They're called pil pilgrims, but they're tourists. The bus stops just down the road, and everybody gets out. They're from all over the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, Africa. You name the continent, they go to the Holy Land. But not during a pandemic. Not one. And there are Christians who run a business. They've got a small store. It's like a taco truck. They serve you food and all. It's their, it's their way of making a living. Not during a pandemic. No income. Their lifestyle completely changed. There are those who make crosses out of olive wood. But they used to sell them for their income, and, but there's no one traveling. There's no tourists. There are no jobs for Christians in Israel. It's a story for real people in a real world facing real challenges. So the next time you face a challenge, remember, you're not alone. There are many all over the world facing perhaps more challenges than you, although I know some of us have lost our jobs. And the hope of Christmas is Emmanuel. God really is with us. God really is involved in your life. And the light that is shining to wake you up and to, to help you become aware of how God is leading you. Even in the difficult times. Because he promises he'll never leave nor forsake. That's why it's the greatest story ever told. And that's why we prepare our hearts as we come to the greatest act of love, which is this Savior who gave his life for us, that we might have life abundantly and eternally through the body of Christ. So pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus a Savior who, who enters a world and takes it just like it gives it to us. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's really ugly. But he overcomes the world. And then he promises that he'll be with us to help us do the same. Lord, we thank you for a Savior who forgives us and never leaves us. And so today, as we come to the table of the Lord, we pray that your light would once again shine, not just in beauty, but in understanding, and that we might follow you. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Robbie will come and help us as we prepare for communion this morning. We're going to do it just a little bit differently. We're going to ask you all to be sure that you 
are physically distanced as you come forward. And uh, those who I will call forward in a little bit will come and, and we will be sure everything is sanitized before we uh, distribute it to you. So let's prepare our hearts for sharing in communion this morning. The scriptures tell us the church community continually committed themselves to learning what the apostles taught them. Gathering for fellowship. Breaking bread. And praying together. Let us pray together. Gracious God, as we break bread together, we thank you for your presence here with us today. We praise you for your goodness and grace. We bow humbly before you, and we come to the Lord's table in a shared, broken spirit, remembering all that you have done for us. On the same night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread in his hands, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Keep doing this so that you and all who come after will have a vivid reminder of me. After they had finished dinner, he took the cup and in the same way said, This cup is the new covenant executed in my blood. Keep doing this, and whenever you drink it, you and all who come after will have a vivid reminder of me. Remember, you cannot wash away your sins. God does this for you. Remember, you are deeply loved. Remember, do this in the memory of the one who did this for you. We remember, we have stained our souls by our actions and inactions. Cleanse us, O Lord, we pray. When we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. By one spirit, we are all baptized into the one body. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build one another up in love. The peace of the Lord Jesus be always with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give you. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is praised among all peoples. You are holy, almighty one. In the power of the spirit, you created all things, blessed them, and called them good. We betrayed your calling. We wandered from your way. By your incarnation, life, suffering, execution, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. Blessed Trinity, in remembrance of all you have done to save us, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has come among us. us. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. Christ, Christ abides with us. us. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on these gifts. Make these gifts the body and the blood of Christ. Make us through them Christ's body alive in the world. 
Amen. If our servers would come forward at this time. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is not our table. This is the Lord's table, and we invite you to come. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on Thank you, River Street Band. Uh, let's stand together. And I want to thank you all for coming and being a part of our service today. Remember, the greatest story ever told is for real people in a real world uh, facing real challenges. So be the light of Christ and take that blessing to others this season. Go in peace. Uh, to love and serve the Lord. It's great to see you all. See you next Sunday. Hey, thanks again for joining with us today. Christmas is the time of year to celebrate the birth of Jesus, a real savior for real people living in the real world today. We'd love for you to come join us in one of our services. Until next time, have a good day. Ooh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free last, he has ransomed me. Oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died. Yes, he died for me, who the sun said.